Hey guys, Drew Lowen here with Drew Lowen Creative. I am a local freelance filmmaker in the Western Slope based out of Montrose, Colorado. Today I wanted to talk about the number one question that my prospective clients or my longtime clients ask me in some way or another. And that question is, how do I use video in my marketing strategy? Or maybe your question is, why should I use video in my marketing strategy? So today I wanted to talk about the why of video, why video is really effective in today's social media climate and in today's online marketing climate. And then at the very end, give you a couple quick tips for how to do that in a more effective way. The first thing I want to say about video is that it's alive, it's dynamic. Video is not just a visual representation of your brand like text and photo, it also blends that with audio. And what this does is it creates a more dynamic representation of your product or service or company or whatever it is you're trying to get out there. You have more creative control over your messaging. So today I'm gonna to be focusing more on social media video uh, as a brand marketing tool. And the reason I'm gonna focus on social media content is because by and large, this is where things are heading. And the cost of entry is a lot more economical for smaller businesses. I mean, we all know that it costs a ton of money to get something on the air for TV. Cable's ridiculously expensive and inefficient. The other thing is that social media, you can be really, really selective with your targeting. So you can actually control who sees your video with complete precision. And that way you're actually gonna have a better return because you'll be putting it in front of people who are actually interested as opposed to just everybody who happens to be watching this channel at this time. With that said, let's look at some of the statistics of how social media video content is performing. By and large, consumers are preferring video to stills and text. So mobile video consumption, that is people looking at video on their phones, increases every year by at least 100%. 72% of consumers would prefer to learn about a product or service by watching a video over and against reading text or researching it online in some other fashion. Furthermore, viewers retain 95% of what they learn in the video compared to 10% of what they read in a blog post or text blurb. So that means if you put a lot of time into making a really good video that explains what you do, people are way more likely to remember what you said than if they had to read a blog post about it. 92% of users who watch a mobile video all the way through are more likely to share it with their friends than any other form of content. In fact, social media video sees a 1200% greater share rate than photo and text posts combined. In fact, video is so much more sought after than photo or text posts that by the end of 2021, next year, 82% of all web traffic will be going after video content. That means 82% of what happens on the internet is going to be people watching video content of some form. Now, that's pretty broad. A lot of those statistics are about video in general. So what does it look like for people who are using video to market their brand, their products, or their services? Well, by and large, people who implement a video strategy see pretty good returns on it. On average, there's a 300% increase in overall web traffic for people who use video. Now that's overall, so that means that's a combination of your organic traffic and your boosted traffic, your paid promotions. As far as organic traffic goes, people often see a 157% increase in just their organic traffic. So that means using video, just your natural reach without having to pay is gonna increase by 157%. It's also interesting to note that there's a 300% increase in email click-through rates for emails that have a video embedded in them. So that email newsletter you're sending out, if you make a video for it, you're likely to see a greater number of click-throughs to whatever type of content you're trying to get your audience to look at than if you didn't include a video. The last thing I'll share as far as video marketing goes is that on average websites see an 80% increase in website conversion if they have a video on the landing page. So you're probably wondering with all these high statistics and really good arguments for implementing a video centric marketing strategy, especially online, what's the catch? Cause it's not like anyone can just post some sort of Instagram video and instantly see a 300% increase in traffic. And you'd be right. You have to strategize these sorts of things. 
And there's two main problems I see in most video marketing that I kind of want to talk about that I usually talk through with my clients before we produce any content, period. Number one is the barrier to entry. Most people have a false assumption that the only type of video they should be publishing is really high production value video, like the stuff I make for my clients. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. That is just not true. In fact, most brands would benefit from having a spectrum of production value in their video. So what does that mean? Well, there's typically a discussion of production value. There's high production value stuff like you see on TV. It's like this, it's well lit, it has good audio quality, the script is well done, it's polished, there's multiple takes, and it costs money to produce. That's really good, you need that. The other end of the spectrum is low production value. And I don't really like that term, so I like to call it pocket production value because what this really means is that it's something that you're making with your iPhone. The camera right here and the mic right here are actually really good and you can do a lot of really effective video marketing if you strategize it right, right here with your iPhone. And then there's somewhere in between. So you'll see producers all the time that have professional cameras and sound and they're doing a more laid back sort of production, sort of a talking head style thing, sort of a quick run and gun, longer form content piece. And this is kind of the middle of the road between something you could do with your iPhone and something you need a whole studio to do. This is also a really important section of your content bucket to fill because people like to see the spectrum. Now, my personal theory on why businesses that do a variation of all three of these different types of content succeed is this. Consumers today really don't like to be tricked. They really don't like the gimmicky $12.99 plus free shipping, telemarketing sort of stuff that we saw in the generation past. We don't like salesy calls. We don't like feeling pressured. What people today are looking for, and this is why social media is so successful, is a genuine connection with a brand that cares about the same things they care about. Whatever it is about your brand that makes you unique, that makes you the best at what you do, or makes you a better option for certain people than the other guy, that's what you should be focusing on and targeting those people who would benefit from that. And that's why pocket production value content and that middle of the road bucket works. Back in the day, people would have thought it was cheap. They would have thought it meant that the company couldn't afford a high production value and it actually would have been a detriment to their marketing strategy. But today it's seen with authenticity. It's seen as empathetic. It's seen as a touch point of humanity being demonstrated by that company. If you think about it, TikTok is one of the largest growing platforms right now. And almost all of that content is created with iPhones, no cameras, no lights, no microphones, just a phone. And they make amazing content. Now it's not high polished, high production value content, but it's almost not supposed to be. This is why businesses who find some sort of unique touch point that they can connect with that can be filmed with an iPhone actually do well to use this. This means that you can make a video today that actually helps your social media marketing efforts. You could do it right now. You just need to know what to film. So typically things like this need to be a little more accessible. They need to be fun or playful and short. And that's the key. That middle of the road bucket that I was talking about is really where things like podcasts and quick style interviews go. It's conversational, it's down to earth, it really shows the humanity of your company, and the goal is just to get it out there quick. So you should be posting stuff like that a lot. And then comes the high production value stuff. This is the stuff you put at the top of your website. These are those ads that you, that you publish and you boost and you target people with. These are those explainer videos that you do to service your customers so they know how to use your products, things like that. And so this bucket is, is more of your creative bucket. I wanna share one last statistic with you to talk about the high production value content and really all content that's video that's online. People today are professional ad sniffers. We see more advertisements today than ever before in history. We're inundated with it. And people don't like being sold to. Odds are if you're watching this video, you're not trying just to crunch your numbers higher and increase your profits. You're likely looking to do business with people that are gonna have a long-standing, positive relationship with you, and that's where everybody wins. When it comes to your video strategy, that also needs to be the focus. Videos that seem overly salesy or seem overly advertising-related get skipped. 65% of people skip ads as soon as they can, if it's a paid ad. 33% of people skip a video after the first 30 seconds. 
In fact, most web pages or most social media sites count a view as three or more seconds. So really, that means anyone who scrolls right past it doesn't get counted as a view. And anyone who does view it, you only have three seconds at least and 30 seconds at most to hook them and get them to watch the rest of the video. This is where you have to add instant value. So this is my main tip for this video and it's probably much longer than I wanted it to be, sorry about that. But here's my main tip. We've talked about video marketing. It should be very clear that it's beneficial to your social media strategy and definitely something that you should implement if you haven't and maybe even increase if you have. But how do we do it? Well, we talked about the different types of content. You have your pocket production value that you should be filming every afternoon with your phone, that middle of the road stuff that really is down to earth, but more long form that gives them a taste of your brand. And then we talked about the high production value stuff that's really polished, really well curated and creative. The thing that's true about all of these is they should be adding what I like to call instant value to your customer. When I say instant value, that phrase isn't the best because it sounds cheap. And really it should be anything but. The content in your video strategy should instantly reward the person viewing it and that is what will entice them into watching more. If you're just trying to sell them something right off the bat with a discount code or with prices or with some sort of feature that they don't really care about, they're gonna scroll right past you and that's a missed opportunity. But if you take time to connect with them in a couple different ways, now you've piqued their interest. And if you give them something for free, whether it be humor or empathy or relatability or even useful information that they didn't know before, they're more likely to trust you as the expert in your field. That's how you build brand recognition with video. And trust me, with all those other statistics, it's pretty clear that it's really effective as a marketing strategy. So that's it. Create videos. Use your iPhone. Pay someone to make really nice videos. Meet somewhere in between. Do all of these things. But whatever you do, don't contribute to the massive overload of really bad information on the internet. Make content that matters. If your brand really cares about this charitable effort, make videos about it. If your brand really cares about products that are made in America that are high quality, make videos about it. If your brand really cares about educating your customers about whatever it is you make so they understand how to get the most out of it, make videos about it. At the end of the day, you basically have the opportunity to greet potential clients or customers with a virtual handshake and give them a really good impression of what your business is about. And if your business is anything like mine, it's more about helping people get the most out of their business, their life, their products, whatever it is that they possibly can. And I think that's how everybody wins. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out to me on whatever platform you're watching this on. You can send a message or you can email me, drew at drewlowen.com. I'd be happy to engage with you, answer questions, and even talk about your video marketing strategy with you. And that's it. My hope is to make more videos like this because I think there's a lot of content that I can create that's beneficial to my clients and to other people out there trying to use video to help their brand or service get a broader reach in today's market. So if you like this video, please give it a like, please follow me or subscribe depending on which platform you're on and stay tuned. I'll come out with more video tips and I think my focus is going to be on video tips for people doing the pocket production stuff. How can you get the most out of your iPhone? Things like that. So you guys can get off the ground and running with video content faster. All right, take care guys. Thanks for watching.